My deck, my deck. My deck. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator, and welcome to a deck building edition of Nightbanes. Because I actually have decided that I enjoy this little free to play game, and I put a couple decks together that work relatively well, although there is some luck involved obviously with the pulling of the cards. Um, and I hope that you guys can try these out for yourselves and let me know if you have any success with them. So this deck is based on Abominables mostly. There are a couple of Skeleton Berserkers just to kind of round it out because I was missing some cheaper cost creatures. Uh, my Vampire Lord, I like to use Veronica Sellers because she adds to Bloodlust when she uses her active ability, which allows you to play an eel or something on one turn and also um, activate it on the next turn make it able to attack or any three three bloodless creature um, I personally like the toad monster as well because it has an active that deals poison damage to one enemy every turn so obviously uh, my cards None of them really have less than one health, except the Berserker, again, whose tenacity allows him to stay alive even while he's dying, or at least have a chance to stay alive. And the two two attack damage uh, stacks up relatively quick. I have Ripper Joe, basically just a cheap cost creature that I can use as a tank and also to destroy the enemy weapon. So I have four Ripper Joe cards in uh, this deck. Which might seem like overkill, but uh, there's not many cheap abominable creatures that I've unlocked yet. So my other one cost creature, Skeletal Berserker, love him so much. Coming over to the two cost creatures, we have Basilisks, who have a chance to stun, and their toughness prevents one attack damage. So if they're getting hit by something like a Ripper Joe with only one attack damage, they will not take any of it at all. And obviously, they can counter with three attack, and they have four health, which is relatively good um, for such a cheap cost card. Only two is is pretty impressive. I have a cockatrice on my team just to kind of mix it up. It also has the stun. It's also flying, which uh, I have a lot of trouble with flying creatures. If you may have seen from my review video, that link is in the description if you haven't seen it. Um, so I I need a lot of things to counter flyers, and the cockatrice is one of those things, as well as kind of being an annoying flying shield like everybody else seems to like to use against me. But I only have one at the moment. I'm hoping they get a couple more, and maybe I'll replace Berserkers. Crypt Spider I really like because they have Earthbind. I'm always worried about the flying creatures, and while they don't have a very high attack, they're health is five which is extremely nice for again a two cross creature monster tentacles also have earthbind to counter those flying creatures in addition to the earthbind they also do uh yeah earthbind makes your attacks do an additional two damage for both the spiders and the monster tentacles so if you're having trouble with flying opponents it's really a good idea to just load your deck down with cards that have Earthbind, and you'll be able to squash them flat in no time, because flying opponents are generally pretty frail, obviously the exceptions being the Ripper Joe and Cockatrice, but they don't have much in the way of attack damage. So, I think that's all the two cost cards. Yep, yep, yep. So we'll move on to three cost cards. I love my Electric Eels. Anytime they are attacked with their great four health, which can stand up to quite a few attacks, they will do one damage back which is quite nice. And they also have a discharge when they are attacking they'll randomly shoot a bolt off to another enemy and just knock a health off, giving them sort of three attack in a way. <laughs> the horrific leeches are so annoying. Seven health and only two attack, but every time they attack they life leech, which adds two back to their health. So these guys can stay on the field for a very, very long time and become the biggest nuisance quite easily. I've, I, I love them. They've won me games single-handedly. Toad Monster, he deals one toxic damage to all the enemies. And then when he dies, he deals, or 
yeah, when he dies, he does one toxic damage to all the enemies. And then every time he has an active turn, he uh, will just randomly shoot a bolt of poison off, much like the electric eel. I love those abilities, uh, creatures with abilities like that. It is quite powerful. So that basically covers the creatures that I have in my deck. And while they do lack attack power, they are extremely bulky, which is why I keep two Blessing of the Elder cards around. Because you never know when two health is going to come in handy. It's actually quite often. <laughs> uh, and to knock the enemy's health down, I carry the Plague Bolts. Two of those as well. And it deals usually two toxic damage, but uh, if the Poison Curse hits before the Envenom, um, because it is randomized what targets you get, so... If they, they only have one card, obviously the Envenom and Poison Curse is going to hit that one card. But if they have two cards out, it's it's kind of 50-50 if it's going to do two or three damage. Which is troubling, but I, I rather like it. It fits the theme of the deck, at least. <laughs> I have an Undead Warhorse who summons two Brittle Skeletons upon leaving play. And also has an Enrage, which has a chance to increase uh, Undead attack by one which is why I keep the skeletal berserkers around they kind of fit together they're obviously the outer cards on this deck but I'm obviously working to get more so we'll see where it leads in the future right now it's pretty serviceable um, the lightning belt does one electric damage uh, every turn basically so it makes it extremely powerful especially if you have enemies who are playing low health characters like uh, the wolves where's that wolf this guy bloodthirsty wolf electric belt will just completely knock him out every time they play one which is super cool and extra damage a turn goes a long way I like the bronze rings because they also increase attack power or rage by one um, and they do stack so if you throw two of them out onto the playing field they could both buff one creature giving it plus two attack or they could uh, go their own separate ways and give two creatures plus one attack and then the linchpin of the entire deck is the amulet of untainted blood oh it is a gorgeous gorgeous thing I've actually used my uh, blood pearls to upgrade it to level two so Initially, it just increased the attack power of one of my abominable creatures by two. And now it actually adds a bloodlust to one of the inactive abominable creatures. So I have a lot of ab abominable creatures. Some of them are pretty high cost. And with the Amulet of Untainted Blood, the two cost cards can get out relatively easily. So this card is meant largely for blitzing your opponent into the ground. Uh, it did work with the Ostraconis that I was having trouble with in the review, and we'll see if I can show off some of its uh, some of its power in the quest. All right, Tasha, let's see what you got. I'm gonna play my Basilisk first. It's pretty cheap, and that thing has a lot of health, but we're gonna be able to beat it down relatively quickly. I'll play the Lightning Belt as well, just to get some extra damage. And there's that Bloodthirsty Wolf I was just talking about in the uh, in the breakdown. So I think I think a Monster Tentacle will do just fine. We've got a few of those. Yeah, and the Belt missed the Wolf because there's multiple creatures on the playing field now, which is unfortunate. But I'm gonna try and get this Amulet of Tainted Blood out there. And see if it can make something happen for me. Alright, so that wolf is causing some trouble. He's got another living tree out. And I don't really have the attack power to counter it right now. In my deck. Ooh, Amulet of Untainted Blood buffed that guy to, to 5. Which is extremely good. I'm going to go ahead and get the toad monster out there. Hopefully... Yeah, I'm going to use my hero power next turn in order to get the toad monster up instantly. Shazam! And actually it was a waste because it gives back two bloodlust and I already had two on it. 
uh, because the Amulet of Untainted Blood had given away one prior. Here's the Bronze Ring. I'd really like some healers, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Oh, we're shutting it down relatively quick anyways. Electric Eel, begin. Here's the Electric Belt. Boom, boom, boom. Fantastic. Put a Ripper Joe out there just for lulls. But it's over. So yeah, abominable deck. I hope you guys will stick around. And if you did enjoy, I hope you will like, comment, and or subscribe. I will probably be doing a couple more Night Bane's decks just because they're that fun. I hope you guys will join me for the next one. Until then, friends. Bye-bye! One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friend.